Today we have the two-time world champion, Mr. Delaney Wallace. How are we doing, sir? I'm doing well, man. I feel blessed. I feel blessed. Super, super fortunate to be here. How y'all boys doing? We're all right, bro. We, we're good. So, I mean, it's just exciting to to have you, especially this is the first time for me to have you on the podcast. I've been literally meaning to have you here, but timing, you work and myself, it's just been a nightmare. But yeah, I'm great. But I'm great to have you here, bro. For sure. Dope. Hey, I'm, sure, I'm glad we're probably finally been able to make it happen. I know, like, I'll answer the DMs, and you take a minute, then you answer the DMs, and I take a minute. So you, you got the kid, the wife, and all that. So I know life is busy, but I'm glad we, we finally got it all done. So it is cool, man. Bro, let me let me start. Right? I know people probably want me to start from the beginning, the, the performance across the board, what you've done so far, where you are. Literally, to be honest with you, like you're a two times world champion. You know what I mean? You don't need to tell people what you've done. People already know what you've done. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> I'm a, a conversation literally we started before I record in terms of like the public speaking you've been doing. Let me just make a comment on this one. Like every time I look at it, it's you don't just uh, inspire these young kids or the people in the room. You inspire everybody across the board. You know what I mean? What I would like you to do is to have a little bit longer session of video on your social media on these ones all these snip that you put on the social media sometimes i'll be listening to it it will cut off and it will put another one i'll be like for fuck's sake I yeah but, but the place to <laughs> social media is not like instagram is for the short clips you want to put on youtube really that's where everyone wants to see it I so yeah, absolutely absolutely. Yeah. absolutely no I'm, I'm i'm definitely working on it there's um like as you guys know i'm not the the best social media guy so it's taking me a little bit to get up to speed but um, I do have some longer form stuff that uh, hopefully I'll be able to share with all the guys soon, and you'll you'll get to see one of the full clips and and uh, and see how we go from start to finish. But yeah, so man, I appreciate the love. Let me start about uh, me just to ask, how did you get on about st- because again, public sp- speaking is not as easy as people think it is. Mm-hmm. Jumping from the people and start speaking your thoughts because again, the reality is when you're speaking to a mass. You don't know what's sitting on that audience. You might have like 10 exactly. PhD guys sitting there, you know, proper like experts in the subject that you're trying to talk about. And when you open your mouth, it will be just like, huh. So how did you start it about all of this? Yeah, man. I mean, what, so what, uh, what most people, I guess, don't know is my dad um, growing up, he's a, he was a pastor. Um, so I, I grew up listening to the count of him speak, but just in a different way, right? Talking about something slightly different. Um, and I always just felt like I could do it to a degree, like, hey, you know, it's, my, it's in my dad's blood, like, you listen to it, you, you, you see what he's doing, but you don't understand the mechanics of it and why he's telling a story a certain way or the tonality or why did we go this route opposed to just delivering the end point or a punchline. And um, one thing that I wanted to do um, when I got into powerlifting and as I started to, like, slowly started to make my climb, I like, like I was saying before, I was like, Hey, like, I'm not, I'm not the best when it comes to social media. I don't really care that much, et cetera. But I did want to try to find some way to have an impact and utilize all this time. Like, I mean, I I, I know you guys are in there for a while, but like two, three hours a day in the gym, like have this time and all this energy and this effort that we're putting into this sport actually provide something back to me past the world championship that, that dies the next year, right? Like the past is the past. You have to do it again. You have to do it again. The second we leave the sport, you're forgotten. Right. And so it's like, okay, how can I have a, a, a greater impact? And so I said, hey, like, I want to try to do public speaking, but I don't know how to formulate a speech because there's an art to it. And I don't know the business mechanics. Like, how, does, how do I even get somebody to be like, hey, Delaney's worth the time to listen to, right? Um, and so I, I, I was at a networking event for my actual job, and I met this guy that happened to be a public speaking coach. And I just said, you want to know what? Like, no better time than the present. Let me just dive in. I went to his class, learned a little bit, and just slowly but surely, you know, was able to book a small gig there, book a small gig there. First one was free. Second one was free. Then you get paid. Then you travel. You have a little content. And I mean, that's really how it started. It just kind of started as a, I thought I could do it. You know, you see Eric Thomas. You see all these other guys. You see Les Brown. You're like, oh, like, this is dope. Like, they're packing out stadiums, and they're getting paid millions of dollars just to speak. It's like, it's got to be possible, right? Um, and then, you know, like I always say, you know, you just take the first step and I just took the first step, got a coach on that sense, just by, I, I do believe in a degree of fate, right? I'm not the kind of person that's like, oh, like I'm not the crystal guy or all this other stuff, but I do like have faith and all that stuff. And I do believe that there's, as we were saying before, before this, like it's all on God's timing, 
And so I believe that meeting that person at the time that I did when I was thinking about it, because I was just talking about it like the day before, um, was kind of God's timing and saying, hey, like this is an opportunity for you to dip your water into something, your foot in the, in, into the waters and, you know, have an impact outside of just lifting heavy weight, right? Because that's fleeting, you know? And so, yeah, it happened and, and, and fortunate enough, you know, I've been able to deliver a few messages and people have, you know, gravitated towards it and, and liked what it is. But the cool thing about public speaking is, to your point, is like you don't know who's on the other side. And most of the time when you do speak, you have some type of understanding of the backgrounds of the, some of the people that are in the in the audience. I think that speaking in front of a crowd is far easier than speaking in front of one person. Okay. And the reason for that is if I'm talking to you, like just you, Jerns, and you're not really feeling what I'm saying – there's no, there's nothing that I can play off of to kind of change that. I have to change my talk. I have to change this. I have to change that. Like I have to find a way to speak to you specifically. But when you have a group of people, what might not resonate with you resonates with somebody else. And if you see it's resonating with them, then it still pulls your attention. And then when I come back to you and with something that might actually resonate more with you, you're able to play off of people's emotions in the rooms and the energy, much like you do like at Sheffield, man, like I said it all the time, like at Sheffield this, um, you know, this, this, this past year, Man, like I walked into the stadium and I could feel the energy of those thousand, two thousand plus people in the room. And I and I felt like in that moment, like I could actually use that energy and repurpose it into the lifting, into this, into that. And so it's very similar in that sense. And so I think that, you know, just reading the room and just, you know, being attention to like body language and, and all of that stuff really helps a lot. But um, it's, it, I, I'm, I'm happy to see things have kind of grown a little bit since then. And, uh, I'm really excited to see like where the public speaking kind of takes off to and, and working on that. No, I mean, to me is like, it's really positive because sometimes is people just see us on the platform. Some people follow what we do as, um, athletes and they get inspired by our work we're putting on the platform, but to be able to step out, that's almost like stepping out of your comfort zone right there. Do you know what I mean? Being in front of people, getting the mic, speaking to them, inspiring people with your words. Because some of us inspire people with what we do on the platform in terms of what mm -hmm. the actions, what they're seeing, what we're lifting, and what the training they're following on social media. But to be able to do it with your words is not an easy thing. This is why I literally mm -hmm. like, I salute you for that. It's not even that like, I'm just saying, not saying this because you're on my podcast. I'm saying this because as a professional, I know how hard it is to inspire someone with what you're just saying. Because yeah. a lot of people out there might be sitting thinking, oh, come on, that's another bullshitter. You think I believe what you're saying, do you know what I mean? But for you to have the courage to still carry on and talk, you know, I respect public speakers and I respect politicians. You know, mm. the difference is politicians, they know how to lie. They're professional at it. And public yeah. speakers, <laughs> they know how to convince people to listen to their bullshit. <laughs> do you know what I mean? So <laughs> yeah. to me, the respect. So that's hard. It's very hard when people think it's easy. It's not. Um. So talking about um, while we're here, it's Sheffield. Sheffield is on the line, right? Yeah, man. And two times world champion, my friend. You started powerlifting in 2019. I will bring us back a bit before more, before we go into all this um, Sheffield um, storyline. Would you ever thought when you started in 2019 that in 2023, you'll be sitting here calling yourself two-time world champion? Started in 2018. Is it 2019 yeah. or 2018? 2018. For, for, first, first meet was 2018. My first USAPL meet was 2019. But okay. um, yeah, yeah. I, so like, yeah, back then I had no clue that there was different federations. I thought everything was drug tested. Like I remember like going to the meet and I'm like, hey, like I want to try to break this like junior state record. Like what, how does drug testing work? And the meet director was just like, you're at the wrong meet. And I was like, oh, damn. <laughs> like, you know, um, <laughs> like I, I, I legit had no clue what was going on. Like, I got a singlet from, like, um, this, like, wrestling, like, store that, like, had this, like, white body armor to it. Because I'm like, yo, why are people wearing, like, plain black singlets? Like, this is whack. Like, I'm going to get some cool shit. So, like, I was, yeah, so it was, it was just a totally different dynamic. Uh, um, but it's funny because looking back then, and I think it's to your point where you say, like, hey, people think public speaking is easy. I thought powerlifting was easier than what it was when it came to climbing up the ranks. And so if you had asked me in 2018, oh, yeah, like, would, you, would I be a world champion, whatever the case may be? I'd be like, yeah, I'm doing this next year, right? Much like every other, you know, ignorant young kid that starts off, you think, you think this, you think that. Then you get to the platform, you realize that, okay, the standard is different, this is different, and that is different. Um, and so 
uh, I did have that belief that I would get there. I thought I, I thought, I think I mistimed the timeline. I, I, I misjudged the amount of work and the effort and the magnitude of what it would be. And, and honestly, at that point in time, I didn't even know that there was a Worlds. I just thought it was like nationals. When I first got in, it was like Russ and Sean Noriega were like the big guys. And my, my, my friend who was coaching me at the time was just like, I bet you can't catch them. And I was just like, bet. And then that was it. So I was like, my, my whole kind of powerlifting world revolved around, okay, get to USAPO nationals and beat those two. And then after that, you just go home and like you, you chill and we're done. Right. Um, and it wasn't until maybe two years into powerlifting that I realized that there was like an IPF world championship. And there was additional stuff and all this other and, and, and everything else. And um, it's crazy how you misjudge the timeline. Um, but it's a, it, it seeing it all happen full circle. It never happens the way you want it to. But it's, it's, it's truly a blessing. And I'm just honored to like be here. But there's a lot of things that have happened as a consequence to that that I didn't foresee happening. And it's all a blessing, you know. <laughs> I mean, again, like especially all of that fast forward and the split between USAPL and um, um, IPF. And I'm sure probably you as every other American, you had to think about a way to go. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I, I, nothing, I'm not taking no credit from the ones that stay with the USAPL because some people, they will tell you, I stayed where the competition is. Right? A lot yeah. of Americans, this is the, word, the line they use. I stay yeah. where the competition is, and some people say, "Oh, I went uh, IPF because I wanted to see the world, right?" And then both mm -hmm. reasons there's no right or wrong when it comes to these two reasons. Yeah. So, where was your mind in terms of like going left or right? Dude, to be honest with you, I, I said it. Uh, I said it. I think on Ryan's podcast like a little while back. I'm like, to be honest with you, I had no intention of going to the IPF. I had zero intention. I had made up my – like, literally, when the split was happening, I texted Joey. I was just like, wherever Russ goes, I'm going. And that was the end of the decision. Like, like when he figures it out, that's where I'm going. And I, and me and Russ, we do, like, some work together. So, like, I knew that he was leaning towards the IPF route at the moment um, to begin with. And so I was like, oh, yeah, okay, I'll go to the IPF, whatever, blah, 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 and get you to do the Worlds thing. And then when – he like, there were some reasons, like, for, like, more business reasons that he decided to go the USAPL route. Um I was like, all right, hey, Joey, hey, you know, where we're going, we stay in, we stay in domestic. And it was so funny because immediately after that, and Joey never like calls you. And if it's a voice note, it's either really good or really bad. Right. And he just sent me like this, like this spew of voice notes and essentially like to, to bring it down and condense it. He was just like, Hey man, I know you want to go to the USAPL. I, I understand the whole thing. Like to the point, follow the competition. That was my thing. I was like, cause I, I had no, I didn't know you existed. I didn't know that Inna existed. I barely knew who Brett Gibbs was. Like I had no, I had no understanding of the world outside of the United States because I was just so ignorant to it all. I don't really consume powerlifting content. So I knew that there was a world, but like, <laughs> I remember my first world, it's like, um, uh, Ryan was on the podcast with me. He's like, yeah, you know, so how do you feel about Tim Matagati and you have to face him in the New Zealand thing and blah, blah, blah. And I was just like, that sounds like a car. I don't know who that is. Like, is that like, it's like a sports car or something. And it wasn't like a disrespect thing. It was just a, I was so in my bubble that I was just like, I just need to train and get better mm -hmm. that I just had no understanding of anything else. Like there are us lifters that I just like I've competed with and I have no clue who you are just cause like, I'm just here. Mm -hmm. Um, and Joey was like, Hey man, I know you want to go to the USAPL, right? I understand why. But he's like, I think that there is a greater opportunity for you if you just take a moment, sit back, and you go this IPF route. And he talked to me about Worlds and how it actually worked. Um, Pete from SBD called me, and he's like, hey, this is the process of maybe becoming an SBD athlete of this, that, and a third. Like, these are the opportunities, da-da-da. And then it literally took me a week to decide. Like, I was like, okay, cool, cool, cool. Like, it was like three or four conversations and then I sat back and I remember being in like my, my apartment and I was just like, you want to know what? It was just like, when I got into the sport, the goal was to become a world champion, mm -hmm. right? When I got into the sport, the goal was to put myself in a position that I could utilize this sport to have a greater impact mm -hmm. and to also like bring something back to me. Like whether it be the ability to public speak, whether it be sponsor, something like bring something worth substance back. And I was just like, how foolish am I? to sacrifice what I want most, which is all of these things 
for what I want right now, which is to chase after one human being that may or may not go up a weight class, that may be here next year, that may not, that may quit, like the, the, all these other things. And I was just like, you want to know what? Like, I'm going to go this route. I'm going to separate the two. We're going to get judged against each other regardless, right? My total is going to get judged against his total, da, da, da. Like, it's going to, whether it's a fair judgment or not, it's going to be, it's going to happen. Let me go my own path and just see what happens. And worst case scenario, I get to go and compete. I see the world one time, even if I lose. And best case scenario, you, you win, you get to go to Sheffield, you get to do this and, and greater things happen. And so that's honestly, it was, it was all Joey and Pete Spence that, that sat me down and said that there's a bigger vision out there than just, you know, USAPL Raw Nationals. And I sat back and I looked at objectively as a business person, right? So, I, I, you know, we have very similar kind of mindsets on that front. So I looked at it as a business person. I just said, there's so much more opportunity going to the IPF than there is in the USAPL. And I, I, I foreseen like what's happening right now. I knew it was going to happen. Okay. I was like, year one is going to be like, oh, okay, blah, blah, blah. Year two, everybody's coming over and year two ended. And now everybody's coming over because I just saw like from a business standpoint, I saw that there's just certain things that weren't lined up in a position that I thought it could compete in the way, at least for like higher level competitors. And, you know, I happen to be right on that front. But yeah, man, I mean, to begin with, I, I, I was just, hey, yo, wherever, wherever Russ and Sean Noriega go, I'm going. That's it. Um, and it was really Joey and Pete Spence that that kind of opened my eyes, if you will. Is it is he um in in America um, Delaney is the maybe it's a culture thing right us Brits and some of us I can say myself Africans we almost like have a different culture from Americans when it comes to competition itself because the th one thing I, I've noticed that you guys always use whatever these guy whatever these guy go I go you know what I mean you've used that you use that now uh, Bob mm -hmm. as against um when we had him when he was talking about ashton and sean mm -hmm. Yeager have used it as well whatever um russ goes yeah. as well. is it an american thing or is it just, just that almost that that, that, that uh what's it called that grudge that you guys hold when you get beat by somebody and you just want to beat them back yeah so i mean for for me um i so i can speak for myself but also i can speak to the psychology of most people and i think there's there's multiple lenses, right? Um, for me, it was less of like a, a grudge, like, oh yeah, like Russ beat me, so I have to get him back. It was more so like, hey, like I started in 2018, 2019, and my goal was to come up here and beat these two people, right? Like my coach said that these are the two people that you have to beat. So I'm just like, all right, this is the goal. I'm gonna go get the goal. And so eventually I was able to kind of separate the two and say, hey, well, that's not really the goal. That was the means to an end. And that was part of the overall process. But the real goal was to do this. Um, I think maybe for Sean's piece, because Russ and him kind of went head to head multiple times, like really head to head multiple times in loss. It, it, there is probably some of that, like, Hey, like I gotta, I gotta get my lick back too. You know, it's like that competitive edge. It's like, I'm going to leave like this guy, this guy doesn't stop me out and I'm just going to leave. Like, no, we're going to like, I'm going to stand here and we're going to settle this. Right. Um, and so I, and I can't speak for other cultures just because I, I, you know, I've always lived in the U.S. My grandfather's Kenyan. He was from Kenya, but I, I, I haven't stepped foot there. Um, but I, I think it's, it's also that competitive aspect of how, uh, of how we think of things. It's like, hey, like if we want to be the best, we have to beat the best. Um, if we see that somebody's right there and like, they, you know, they're saying that they're better than us, then let's, let's go settle this, right? Mm -hmm. And so I, I don't know if it's a grudge thing. I mean, for some people, I think there is a grudge thing, right? I think it depends on the person. Like some people hold grudges. Some people want their lick back. Some people, you know, they feel like they're embarrassed because they lost to this person or that person. Um, and then some people are like, hey, this is the goal that I set. And so if this is part of the, the, like the line of steps that I need to do in order to reach this goal, it's another thing. And so I think for everybody, it's different. I think for Bob and Ashton, it's one of those things. Like I think they're, they're coached by the same coach. Um, they're in similar weight classes. I know that either of them could go up or down at, at, at any given time. And so it's a, kind of like that internal rivalry. Like, yo, bro, like if me and you had the same coach, man, and like we're, we're in the group chats talking together, like you, you, you were a USA person and I, or I was a Great Britain person and we're in the group chats, man. Of course we're going to be in the group chats. Like, yeah, no, like wherever, whatever local meet you go into, I'm pulling up to because now I'm blah, 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 blah. like it's, it just kind of happens by, by nature. I mean, you guys do it internally within GB, um, uh, GB just like, outside of weight classes, whether it be dots or points or IPF or whatever the heck the system is now. Um, and so I, I just think it's the way that the individual processes competition. Mm -hmm. 
mm-hmm. that kind of drives that. And I think as an 83, at least, um, objectively as an 83, especially coming up, all I saw was Russ, John Hack, Sean Noriega at the time. And so I'm like, these are the best three people in the world. Right. Whether it's true or not, these are the best three people in the world. I, I really didn't know who Brett Gibbs was. I heard about it once or, once in a while, but I was like, oh, yeah, Russ is probably better than him. I don't know. Because like, you don't you, you only see what you see. And so from a competition standpoint, especially as an 83, it was very easy to be like, oh, well, like if Russ is the, the main guy, then mm-hmm. go after him. In other weight classes, it's not the same, right? Like other people dominate. And so I think it dep- also depends specifically to that weight class too how they also process certain things but there's a number of different ways and i I guess it also kind of lies where like that 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 individual's heart lies in what they want to accomplish yeah boys you you can jump in if you have any question but what you just said there in terms of like 83 you only saw hack um sean and russ uh, you're not wrong there because maybe i might be wrong to say this but with americans the perception of americans is the tunnel vision right american Mm -hmm. lives in the tunnel vision where yeah they don't see the rest of the world. They just see them being the best. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Everything. So whether, um, like, there is a, as you said, there is Gibbs there that whipped um, uh, Russ's ass in 2018. People didn't see that. But still, in America... Today, I didn't start. Yeah. I hadn't even started yet. I had no clue there was a world. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, okay. You know, so, like, it happened. It's it's true, and it's, like, it's not wrong. Um, But, yeah, to your point, like, Brett Gibbs is he, he's nasty. I'm like, thank thank God he's not still here because he would have whooped my ass. Like you know, like, but like, I'll, you know, I'll, but like, I'll, 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 end, up, I'll like, end up I'll I'll end up like twentieth every year. So I'm I'm telling <laughs> what he's not you yet. Know? <laughs> um, uh, but like, but even John Hack for me, I knew about John Hack only because everybody in the U S. talked about him, but I never saw him compete unless we're talking about untested. And now that's a realm that I don't really it doesn't really mean anything to me. But I just knew he was the goat. But I didn't really know. I didn't had no substance as to the actual impact that he had in those moments. I'm mm-hmm. like, oh yeah, okay. Like John Hack is cool. He's a goat. All right, cool. So he's one of the best two before he did it, but then he left and some weird things happened. All right, cool. So it's, it, I think it's also timing and powerlifting is one of those sports where people come in new every day. Like the barrier to entry to powerlifting is virtually zero. Get a $30 gym membership and you can become a powerlifter. You don't even need these sleeves, you know? And so a kid that just walked in today to powerlifting he goes to open powerlifting he goes to watch the, the ipf worlds and he's going to be like oh shit delaney's the best 83 to ever do it and that's fucking wrong <laughs> russ is, russ is better. but they don't know because it's the only thing they see they'll look yeah. at they'll look Delaney. at the 74s and they'll be like taylor yeah. atwood isn't that good he was and you'll be like oh no well, taylor atwood did all this stuff but they just walked in and the first meet they saw was the worlds that he lost and they didn't see the body of work and mm. so it also, I think, depends on when that individual came into the sport yeah. because we do a very bad job of history telling. And yeah. because it's not like football or soccer or basketball where there's some subjectivity to like winning and losing, like what we're going to say like 10 years from now, all of these records that are happening are going to be blown out the water. And there's somebody, Ryan's going to come back. He's going to be on his podcast. He's going to talk about Brett Gibbs, who was one of the goats of all goats. And they're going to look at Gret Dibbs' total, and they're going to look at whatever the total is at that point in time with all the additional whatever. And they're like, oh, Gret Dibbs wasn't that good. But it's also the moment in when it happened yeah. that makes it extremely important. And because we have these finite numbers that we can literally just take your total from 2023 and compare it to 2020, which is not a fair comparison, but people are going to do it because we're lazy. They're going to say, oh, this guy in 2023 is 10 times better than this guy in 2020, even though he had a three extra year runway. Right. Even though like when that total had happened, it was unforeseen before it was 40 kilos over this. So it's also when it happened and how it happened, that's important that we don't get to see. And so to the point, that's why, like I said, I was like, what right or wrong? And there there is some right to it, but wrong in the sense of there's is more out there, like as a new 83 coming up. I'm just like, oh, the only people in 83 that matters in the world is Russ and Sean Noriega. And Pancake got at the time because his squat was enormous. And I was like, oh, my God, like, Jesus Christ. Like, you know, like those are the only people that mattered. Meanwhile, there's tons of people across the world, even just the year before or six months before I got in there, that are kings of the world. But I just didn't never see it because you only, we, you know, you, you only see what you see, right? Um, sorry, go off on that tangent. <laughs> no, <laughs> That's all right. Go on, Mark. I, I, had, a, I had a question because I've, I've kind of studied everyone's career over a lot of the Americans who have come into that. 
IPF, so people who come from USAPL, people who made that transferred in that USAPL, USB IP, or then came over to the IPF. I've always thought your journey was always one of the the weirdest one because in terms of like, and you said it yourself. You you I don't know what if it's a case of just your perception or the way everyone sees it, but you don't really consider yourself one of the top eighty threes even, and it's very weird in that sense. And you're shaking your head right now, right? Because first of all, South Africa, 2022, right? You totaled 802.5 kilos. The narrative was after that competition, right? You had Sean Jin from the Americas, a junior saying, oh, I could have done that. A lot of the USOPL lifters were like, oh, that would have barely cracked top three at USOPL nationals, right? You, you, you took it on the chest. You kept on grinding. Yeah. You came back and you did Sheffield, 835 kilos, only seven kilos away from Ross's record. You had that pull in your hand. The narrative was, oh, we expected him to get it. We should have broken Ross' record. You know, no one was now talking. No one in the USCPO has touched 835 apart from Ross. It was now, he didn't break Ross' record, you know. And then you had IPF Malta 815, where you missed your third squat and you missed your third deadlift, right? That's easily 15 to 10, 20 kilos off your total. No one said much apart from, ah, Delaney should have won it. There was no narrative of, ah, oh, Delaney's weak because 815, funny enough, a lot of the USCPO, people in lead up to their nationals or mega nationals were talking 830, 840, who's going to break Ross's record. Funny enough, they match your total. Your total that one IPF fours is the same total someone matched over there where you missed two of your best balls. The other person had a nine for nine day. Right. So was not, in, the, the USOP was not even 810. Was it 815? No, it, it was 815. Angelino got 815 with a nine for nine performance. Right. So you've had this this rise where I, you've you performed Apart from Ross, realistically, like talking hands down, you, you've been the best. And Ross hasn't even competed as an 83, right, for a long time. You haven't seen Ross on the platform for a while. And apart from those lifters, you've been the dominant 83, but you've not been giving your accolades as the dominant 83. There's always been a this or that or should have or this, you know. It's, so how, how has that made you feel? And ha has that even started to affect your perspective? Do, do you now feel like, what numbers do you feel like you need to do? What what performance do you feel like you need to do before people give Delaney his accolades, Delaney his win? You don't become a two-time IPF World Champion just because someone isn't there, you know? There are yeah. 900, 1,000 other people in the world trying to do the same thing you've done, trying to be in the same position you've done. The people who said they could do what you've done, you know, don't think in a local me as a junior. So no. how, Yeah. Don't forget about what Jurian said as well, but he was the best 83 on the day. That's just exactly we, we had we had our boss man here making chance accolades, screaming his name off the top of the mountain, and you whooped his ass on a nicely. So what what performance? Well, how 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 has this last even though this two years have been amazing for you? You won IP awards, you're going towards the end goal that you want to achieve. It's also how's that how's that journey felt like for you? How 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 have those thought? And even now that we have Sheffield coming around, the narrative isn't what's Delaney gonna do. The narrative is what's Ross gonna do when he comes back. So how have you felt? It's been a weird three years. It's been a weird yeah. journey, but how's yeah. that felt for you? Um, I think I expected it to a degree. Um and so to to be fair, right, and like to to go back to the point, because I think a lot of people like we we say things just because we're emotional, but then if you look at the through line between all of our thought processes, you start to see a lot of misconnecting information. And so even if I had gone to Sheffield, and let's just say I had totaled 842.5 or 845, whatever is enough to beat the, the record, even then I wouldn't have said that I was the best 83 in the world because it took me two more years than it Russ, did Russ it was to do it, right? So objectively, I have the best total at the present point in time, but until we see each other head to head and I'm able to actually do that dance, I think it's kind of unfair to be like, oh, I'm better. It's like, you know, it's comparing two different people at two different times. Although I know we do it, and that's just the one caveat to powerlifting that I think is kind of unfair when we try to calculate things. Um, but I I came from a football background. Um, and although, like, I'm very calm and I'm chill and I'd be, like, I'm happy and all this other stuff, like, I I understand criticism extremely well. And I understand one when somebody's just trying to do something just to get like a, a, a like some type of emotion or something out, and also when all right, there's some valid points to it, right? Um, we look at we look at um, uh, the South Africa performance. I didn't perform well. There's thousands of different reasons I could say why. Whatever the case may be, it doesn't matter. You have to perform on the day. 
And I said, like, hey, sometimes you don't have to be your best to be the best on the day. We got the job done. The job was to qualify for Sheffield and win. We helped out Team USA. We did that. Um, some of the criticism when it came back to, like, oh, like, I could have did that and I could. The, it was funny because it was, like, the only per the only person in the U.S. that I have not beaten in head-on in a head-to-head -head matchup is Russ. And I was the only person I was just like, ah, oh, hey, shit happens. And then that was it. Right. And so when I looked at it and I was like, okay, hey, it was like, it was this, it was that, it was this podcast, that all the people that were talking were people that if we actually went back and we looked at the actual like numbers on the actual day, I've competed with them on the same day and beaten. And so in my mind, I didn't have much to prove. Like it wasn't like, well, I, I didn't need to have like that dick measuring contest of, oh yeah, da, 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 this, that, there. it's like, I, I've done it already. I had a bad day. You had a good day that day, whatever the case may be. Hey, you weren't here. Pull up and come take it, right? Um, the Sean Jin thing. Now that it's done, and I can like, I can actually like speak my emotion on it. Um, like that was the one thing that probably pissed me off a little bit because I was just like, I, 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 I genuinely just don't know who you are, and I'm one of those people. It's like if I have something to say, like I'm gonna say it to you. And so to find out when I like looked at the stats, I was like, wait, like you were at Powerlifting America Nationals and like. I didn't know you were even there. Like you were standing next to me and I had no clue you were there, but now you have a, a decent day. That's still less than my like second best total. And like, you're doing all this stuff. I'm like, yeah, like this, it, we not, we not having this. Right. And so that was probably the one thing that kind of like irked me a little bit because I was like, you're, you're trying to use me as a springboard to try to get attention or do whatever in case may be. And like, I was just like, I like, I know, I, I know people that are really like that. Like, I don't like the fake stuff. It doesn't, I'm just like, this is, this is corny. Um, but when it comes to like the accolades or like the praise or the this or the that, um, I think I've just gotten to this place where for me, a lot of this is not for the accolades or the cloud or for you to be like, oh, Delaney is the best or this, that, and the third. Like I'm hyper competitive. I want, I want to be the best. Like, I'm not like, we're, I'm not trying to dance around that subject and that topic. The goal for me is to blow up Sheffield enough that I can qualify for worlds. And then Russ and me can go and do the dance at worlds. Right. Like that. I, I want, I want that to happen. Right. Um, but I don't like the, the, the I have perfect example. Two white lights put up this post um, uh, the other day. I saw it and he was like, Oh yeah. Lifters getting mad that we didn't put them in like to win nationals, even though they don't post their training. And it's like, I'm the opposite of that. Like, I'm not going to post my training and I don't care where you put me because I'm going to show up and we're just going to figure out where I fall anyway. And and so like, I, I just, I'm in this like really peaceful place of like, that doesn't bother me. Um, now blatant disrespect, that'll bother me and we're, we're going to handle it. We'll do whatever, blah, blah, blah. But when it comes to like, oh, I'm mad that this kid doesn't think that I'm better than this guy or this guy doesn't whatever, blah, blah, blah. Like everybody's going to have their opinions. Things are subjective. Um, and then sometimes it's just like, that's their boy. So they're just like, they're, they're going to go and root for, so no matter what you do, people thought that, she, people thought Sean Noriega was going to beat Russ five years in a row. And I'm like, I'm looking at the numbers as like an outsider. I'm like, this doesn't even look close. And then every single year, the same thing happens and we still have the same story. And this isn't like a shade thing. This is just like people make emotional decisions and then try to rationalize it with logic later. And so once they've made that emotional decision, they'll find any convoluted way to be like, oh, Russ is going to get the flu, then he's not going to total, blah, blah, blah. Um, and so I say all that to say that's – I think that's why when it comes to my journey, I'm not, I'm not so hurt about not being considered the greatest of all time or this and a third, the two-time world championships and all this other stuff. It's like I acknowledge what's happened, right? Usain Bolt had the fastest 100-meter dash time. And when he retired, does that mean that the next world champion isn't a world champion? No, it just means that he's not the best to ever do it, but you're still a world champion. And so I, I'm, 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 I'm comfortable in that space. Um, and then it's funny because it's like there's this saying that it's just like most people never shoot down, right? They always shoot up. And so when you look at majority of the people that like talk the most with, with, with malice, not like the competitive piece, like Jerns is going to say, because we got to go see it head to head. We're going to do the dance. But – people that are just shooting just to shoot, like the Sean Jin situation, for example, you, you always shoot up, right? You never shoot down. And when you look at it, it's like, all right, well, if you're shooting up, you have to come catch me. I'll see you when you get here because I'm worried about continuing to kind of rise. And so I, 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 always tell the, I always tell any kid that asks me for advice when it comes to like, how do you grow in this sport and how do you get it? And they, oh, I want to be like you or this and other thing because like, they see like this now and they're like, oh, this is awesome. 
And I'm like, dude, I'm like, 90% of the people in powerlifting that are powerlifting right now won't be here next year. And they won't be there the year after that. Because not many people have the mental fortitude to do – powerlifting is boring. Like I, and, and, and people got mad. I got DMs. I got DMs that people were like, you, you, you're a world champion. And you said powerlifting is dull as dirt to watch. And like my SBD thing, he's like, oh, that's kind of disrespectful. This no, 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 no. Powerlifting is objectively a boring sport to watch in and of itself, right? But I love the art form of competition. And so if I didn't find powerlifting, I would have found something else. I would have found something else after this. I love competition. And the competition of it all is what makes it exciting. But powerlifting itself, it's dull as dirt. You do the same squat, bench, and deadlift every single day that you train, five days a week, four days a week, six days a week. And the mental fortitude to sit there and do the same thing again and again and again and again and again and again and again. again. Most people don't have the stamina to do that. And I said – and so I tell all the young kids, I'm like, it's not sexy to hear, but you're going to beat 90% of the people out there just because you didn't stop. Somebody's going to stop and do bodybuilding. They're going to say, oh, I want to do strongman for a year. Oh, I'm going to go take a vacation. I'm going to go to Costa Rica, and we'll take two months off, and I'm going to come back. I'm not really – and so – and, and so with that, like I, I always say, it's just like, hey, just put your head down, and I'm a big believer. If, if I do everything that I'm supposed to do, that everything else will work itself out. Like I had a feel – I had a feeling that Sheffield was going to happen the way it happened. I thought it was going to break the record, but I had a feeling that with the Sean Jin situation and getting to Worlds, it was going to happen. Because, like, you got to remember, he had a free ride. All he had to do was hit 825, and no matter what I did, he was going to Worlds. And, like, I just felt it in my spirit. I'm just like, you do what you have to do, Delaney, and everything's going to work out. And it worked out the way to, in my favor, right? And so I just have this feeling that when you put your head down and you do the work, when all the chips are said and done, when the book is written, like, you're going to have something that is worth reading. And sometimes it's going to be greater than what you ever thought, man. You know, um, and so for all the love, there's tons for all the hate. There's tons of love that happens. Like there are kids that say, hey, like I'm flying to Sheffield to meet you. And I'm like me. I'm not special. Right. The, there's people that like. And so it's just it's it's a cool feeling. And so I I take all the hate and the positive with a grain of salt. Um, and I just know that there's there's going to be people that love you. There's going to be people that hate you. And and I think the way that I, I the reason I carry myself the way I do is because I believe like I have this sense of obligation to those that do care about my journey or do love me or do derive inspiration from me. I'm, when I look in the mirror, I'm just like, I have to be the person that I said I am and be truthful to that. And so that's what pushes me. You know, that's what pushes me. And that and that's what kind of like where my mindset is. And I'm just like, hey, like nothing's going to change it. Like nothing's going to change any of that. Just put your head down and work and the chips will fall where they will. And you're going to be happy with it. Um I think, I think it also helps that I always tell everybody this. I'm not a powerlifter. I'm like a businessman. I'm all this other stuff that just happens to be good at powerlifting. And so I think because my whole identity is not wrapped in this one thing, I don't take as much offense to things as some people that are like, I'm only this powerlifter. So if I'm not the best, then I'm like, I'm not a man or I'm not this or I'm not. Yeah. So my self-worth is not wrapped in this small little vain thing. Um, so I, I just don't take offense to to, to much. I, mean, you know? I think what you mentioned there, Delaine, is some of us have lives outside this, right? Yeah. So you said a lot of people won't be here in a year or nine months time. It's because these people have got lives. Mm-hmm. Shit happens, right? If I end up having twins, fuck powerlifting. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? So, All right, so then, <laughs> don't shoot up the club, brother. We got we got a couple more meets we got to do. Exactly. Don't shoot up the club. club. You know? so, <laughs> yeah, Espen, have you got a question before I go to my next? Yeah, so I have two questions actually. So we were speaking. So you were talking about um, you pretty much have a good idea on what people are gonna hit number wise, right? At comps, because you you seem like a data man. Not much like a data man like Mo that happens to know everything from fucking two thousand and ten. You know, you but, know when when Delaney mentioned Costa Rica and going on holidays. I, I did you feel like he was you. talking I about you, you and your powerlifting journey? I, I feel super attacked, but that's you know what, and we'll save that for another day. It's fine. Wait, what happened? Wait, wait, what oh, happened? So Espin, Espin has not competed. So Espin is a 66, well, a fake 66 kilo powerlifter. And he hasn't competed in the last three, four years now. And okay, every wait, single time years. he comes to British Nationals, he's always timed the holiday perfectly with For Nationals. excuse. I didn't come uh, to British, not because I don't yeah. want to get beat, but because I went on a holiday. Delaney, look, look, hear me out. I've got a wife. She wants to travel the world. Why not? Why not? Hey, happy, happy wife, happy life. I can't be mad and at Delaney, it, and, and you, look, she's Colombian as well, so you oh, can't get the man. Oh, yeah, no. There we go. That, 
Does anybody understand? Yeah, 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 yo, I'm, I, yeah, I understand, man. That's yeah? yo, you put that man's life in danger. You keep trying to play around. <laughs> <There you go. laughs> I know what I'm no, saying. No, but yeah, all right. That's what I mean. So my question, I have two questions, right? So obviously we spoke about um, you are good with numbers and you have an idea of like what people are going to hit during comps, right? Because you do the data. Did you know, like, and what did you think Jurens was going to do at Worlds? Was you kind of like worried going into Worlds thinking, oh shit, Jurens training is looking good. He could be someone that, you know, is potentially going to fucking be right behind me. Speak your oh, mind. Don't ga- don't feel the need to gash the and, Just speak yeah. your mind. Just, if you no, weren't no, impressed, no. you weren't impressed. No, 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 no. So, so it was funny because I actually spoke about this on the KOTL podcast. So you can even cross reference what I say now to that. Um, I was, so for a majority of my prep, at the first half coming out of Sheffield, I was pretty worried because I was I was banged up. Like I had or I had messed up my adductor. I'm still recovering from the adductor injury, but it wasn't as bad then as it is like or it was now. It's starting to get better. Turn that corner. I'm sure that'll be a question that comes up later on. Um, and so my worry wasn't that my my worry was I wouldn't be healthy enough to face him at his best. And again, like, again, you only see what you see in social media. So I don't know if you're hurt. I don't know if there's, you know, the kid got sick or this and that there. You took off training. I, I only see the small bit of data that you see there. And, and so for, for the most part, like there was a point in time, I would say like seven weeks out that I'm just like, yo, like, I think I need to pull out of this competition because as I, I don't think that I'm going to be ready. Like I physically, like it hurts to get out of bed. And, um, and I, was, I, I didn't tell anybody this. I literally kept it all in my head. I was just, you know, put the head down, put your head down, just keep on working. You never know what's going to happen. Um, and then two things happened. One, my sister called me and she's like, yo, I got tickets to, to go see you at the world. So she's all excited. Da, da, da. I'm like, yo, if my sister believes I'm going to be ready, I'm going to be ready. Like it, 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 we just have to have this cool bond where like she doesn't worry about things that are going on. She just believes that I'm going to be ready and that things are going to happen just even outside of powerlifting, just life. And like, almost every single time it's, it's come true. And so I just, it, it's a superstition, whatever, but like, I believe it in my heart. But then um, I remember, I remember, I don't, so I don't consume much powerlifting content, but when my name gets brought up or it, like it's negative or it's this, or it's like this polarizing conversation, like random people would just send me like clips and snippets, right? And I remember this is probably the first time that I actually got to sit down and watch, like, listen to this podcast. So somebody sent me something. Like, oh, they did the recap, this and a third. I think at this point in time, it was like maybe like five weeks out, four weeks out. It was like, it was still some time. And I remember listening to the recap of, or like the preview for the 83s. And I just listened to it. And much like the same feeling I got, and we could talk about South Africa too, the same feeling I got when I listened to the King of the List podcast, when they were talking about when specifically Rory was talking about Tim Matagati because that like they were in the same country or whatever. I just had this feeling. I was just like, I'm going to be okay. I was like, I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know if I'm just going to be strong enough to be a hundred percent or if something's going to go wrong. But one thing about sports is it's not about how much me or him or anybody lifts in the gym. Like we all have these great PR lifts in the gym and sometimes it just doesn't happen on meet day. Mm-hmm. But I just like, I, I, I just had this feeling in my heart that I'm just like, show up on the day. And you never know what's going to happen because everybody else in the world has to show up on that day and perform the same way. And so when we were both healthy, I thought it was going to be a, like, I thought thought it was going to be like a gunslinging contest. I assumed on on a healthy day that he was going to squat 705. Like I thought that in my heart was going to happen. And so I'm like, all right, if I can, if I can neutralize that as much as possible and get somewhere between 672 in 694, that will be enough for my bench to take over. And now it's just, a, okay, like it comes down to the polls. So that was my thought process. Like let's both healthy. I'm like, all right, close the gap on squat. He'll probably out squat me, but that's fine. Ball out on bench. And then I thought our deadlifts were relatively similar in, in strength. Then it just comes down to, okay, like who, who can finish, right? Who has gas? Um, but yeah, I, I'm telling you, like I have these weird things that happen where I just like, I feel it in my heart. And it carries me through entire preps where I'm just like, you have to just finish the day. Like you have to just answer the call and just keep on going. And, and, and that, and that's what happened. And so, yeah, I, I, I didn't expect what actually happened to happen. Um, but I thought, I thought I, I just, I, in my heart, I felt like something was going to happen. I'm like, it, it's like, I was meant to win it. Like, and, and again, maybe it's a competitive thing where you find reasons to believe it. 
but like it, it's very weird, small, small, subtle things that happen. I'm just like, all right, we're gonna we're gonna be good. But healthy to healthy, I was expecting like a 700 something pound squat, 705 squat. Uh, if if you had jumped to on that day, if you had tried to do like 711 or 722 because you were feeling really good, I would expect that to be a miss, and then you lose something. But I didn't think like the way that the Great Britain coaches, when I've spoken to them like their thought process oh, around things. I didn't think they were going to be that aggressive. I would mm -hmm. do some dumb shit like that, but like, I don't think that they would be that aggressive. Um, so then I was like, all right, 705, I was thinking on squat bench. I, I wasn't really familiar with benches, but I just believed that I had enough to just overtake and kind of neutralize whatever the gap is on squat. And then I was just like, all right, we just going to have to see, you know, who has enough gas to pull and hope that Inna doesn't pull 900 in the process. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, one thing you said, Adelaine, right, as much as like, we're all competitors, like against each other on the platform, we go for it, for war. But there's one thing people don't realize in this sport or any other sport. It doesn't matter what people have done, just turned up. That's most, I mean, the first time, the first thing on the winning process is turning up to the meet, weigh in and get on the platform. Because you don't know what will happen. I mean, unlike Espin that doesn't turn up to meet, that's the problem. But these you <laughs> have to turn up. Don't pull out of meat thinking, oh, that guy is strong. His training is looking strong. I don't want to go embarrass myself. You never know. Do you know what I mean? So, Absolutely. Um, yeah. So, Espin, go on. And my second one. I, so by the way, Delaney, I think that was a bit too nice when you said about Durian's. You know? I thought you were going to attack him a little bit more. But, you know. <laughs> no, nah, yo. Like, this I was is expecting the, like, this... some serious, like, hmm. But, nah, man, nah, man. I, I, I'm telling you, I'm like, I don't I'm know. Like, I, I'm but telling I said, you, like, I, 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 on, I did, you know know what, what, did, did you, did you listen on KOT when I said, as, as much as like probably you took it as food, but when I said, at the end of the day, no matter what we do, Delaney is still the man to be, and that's the truth. Do you know what I mean? Whether my training yeah. looked strong or whether I was strong during that prep. But you were still the man to be because it's the man going to world of 835 kilos. That's the one we need to be, right? So if I had told you 850, I'm a British, and I would be like, I think I'm the man to be because I got 850, got 835. Do you know what I mean? So yeah. I said it. That, that's the truth. Yeah, no, yo, look, like, again, like I said, like, yo, I, I derive my, my motivation in different ways. Like, some people need the anger and they need to hate the person across from them in order to do better. Um, and, like, so... And, and also, I'm just like, I'm, I'm also a firm believer, if you have to believe, if you believe that the person that you're having to go to go up against has to have a bad day in order for you to beat them, you don't deserve to win, right? And so I assume that every single person that I come up against, I'm prepared for their best. 90% of the time, you won't get anybody's best because there's this stuff that just happens. It's life, it's competition, which is why you have to show up to the dance, right? Um, but... Like to that point, I was looking at it and I was just like, I'm looking at certain numbers. I'm looking at numbers that I'm hitting in the gym. And I'm like, I would expect to hit this if I'm doing that. I would expect to hit this. And so that's kind of how I gauged it. Um, and, uh, and after the fact, um, I talked with your coach a little bit. We had a little like fireside chat, like at, outside the hotel, like at the very end. And I was, it was actually funny because like, I don't, I, I didn't have any number for squat. I mean, for bench, but like the squat number, he was like, oh yeah, I think we're around that, like give or take. Um, for the day, maybe he was just gassing me up and saying that I, I picked, uh, you know, I guessed right. But uh, it, it was like cool to just see that like the game plan seemed to be in the right position if like all went right and mm. and everybody was healthy. Um, and I mean, hey, um, but yeah, man, I I, I see Jern's training and, and I call a spade a spade. Like I'm not I'm not here to be like, oh yeah, like this guy's not going to do this or this guy's not going to do that just to have a sound bite. I'm like, hey, this is what I expect. We're gonna pull up. We're gonna do the dance, and we're just gonna see where it all falls. And I don't know. No, I just, the the clickbait stuff ain't for me. No, <laughs> Delaney is not the type that he sees my three or eight. What 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 do you guys American call it? Six eighty three squat, right? He sees it and goes out. Yeah, but that squat still not stronger than Russ. Delaney is not gonna say that to me. So fuck off, Espin. <laughs> I've got I've got I've got two questions, right? Um, and I don't know if now's the right time to ask this question, just because. Like you mentioned earlier, you're dealing with your abductor injury. You're still on the rehab mend. And like I've been in myself then. If anyone asks me what numbers I'm aiming for, majority of the time, my mentality is, hey, I just want to be healthy enough to live on that platform, right? But you're going to be going to Sheffield. Sheffield is roughly yeah. in about two, three months now. And I feel like this, this question ties into 
basically dealing with Ross, whether or not he makes the IPF falls and depending on what he does at his local competition. Yada, 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 we continue on, right? But what performance, what total do you feel like you need to hit, hit right, to set you up to be, like, cemented as I am the 83 to be, and if he goes to Sheffield if, or if he goes to IPF Worlds, I'm not going there to beat another man. I'm expecting people to come and beat me at that competition. So what total do you think that you need to hit at Sheffield? And I have a feeling that same total that you plan to hit at Sheffield will put you in the race to potentially win it because you came fourth missing your last deadlift, right? If you got that deadlift, you could have been second or third, I believe, right? Actually second. Yeah. Um. So what total do you think you, you, you need to hit at Sheffield to cement you that? Because that will give you at least three things in one go. Yeah, Um. 100%. I was talking to Joe about it. 100%. Whether we like it or not, we have to break the world record. Like, that's just bare minimum. Um, I think to be in a position to feel good about our chances to go to Worlds, right? Um, the way that Powerlifting America and the U.S., and they haven't come up with the exact criteria, so it might change. But if I'm just using history as my benchmark, Nationals is going to be the only way to 100% qualify for Worlds. Right, you're gonna to have to hit the Carpino score. The Carpino score is gonna be something that if Russ doesn't hit it, he's he he had to have been sick, right? He like he had to have been like sick, hurt, he didn't show up, whatever. So I'm assuming he's gonna hit it, and he's gonna be the like the number one regardless, you know, go, going to I'm um, going to Worlds, and I need to try to vie for that alternate spot, much like Gavin did um, uh, this past year, right? Um, with that, I do think that I need to bare minimum break the world record total. Um, whether by an inch or by a mile, it needs to happen in order to be in that, in that best position because after that, it goes on Carpino score and who would have been in the best position to win Worlds, you know, as the alternate. And so because, and, and this is where, like, it's funny, I was, again, I just get these feelings. If you look at everything that happened, Worlds happened, and with Worlds, like, even though I was hurt, I was like, if I can, if this pain subsides enough, I still think I can go and, out total what I did at Sheffield. Like I was still going, right? I wanted to go. Um, and it didn't happen that way, but it might've been a blessing in disguise because because of that, the Carpino score dropped. I only did 815, I didn't do the 835, I didn't do this, which then by, by virtue, if I do even better at Sheffield, if you look at all the other weight classes, the spread between the Carpino score and the world record total for the 93s, it's pretty much the same thing. Like you need to break the world record total just to like kind of be there. In that sense, it puts me in a slight advantage when it comes to the alternate spot, depending if it's the same exact way as it was last year, that the goal for me is break the world record total, let it fall where it is. Um, bench is flying. And so the goal again, it's, it's, I'm not going to know if I'm ready until the day. Right. And that's going to be the, and that's the storyline for me. It's just like, can Delaney go from squatting one red two months ago, right, to breaking the world record total come, come Sheffield and with Russ coming and all this other stuff, right? So, but I, I think I'm getting to the point where I'm starting to trend back in the direction of getting like healthy and being there. Um, and I do think that with the fact that I can still, I could still bench this whole time, bench has been having a nice uptick. I think it's going to be enough to, put me there where I need to be, or at least put me in the position. But yeah, I mean, the world record total needs to be broken um, in order for me to, I think, solidify that alternate spot to then get to Worlds. And then I think if that does happen by June at Worlds, I'll be healthy enough that, uh, like, I'll be like 100% healthy that it'll then, like, it'll then be one of those things. And so but I'm not too worried about going into Worlds and have, and if Russ is there, if I'm there, if Jaren's there, if Anna's there, if whoever else, like, oh, there's so many 83s. If whoever else is there, like, I'm not worried about being the guy that needs to be beaten, right? Um, I, I want to get there. And then once I get there, we're, we're, like, when everybody's there, we're just going to do the dance. And I think that, I think Worlds is my best opportunity to win um, uh, when it comes to just, like, judging and, 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 make, and doing a playing field that kind of disrupts everybody's patterns. Um, and I think that June gives me enough time that I'm going to be healthy enough. And I think that now I'm strong enough on my, on my strongest day to compete at that level. Right. If you asked me two two years ago, I wasn't strong enough to be just objectively. I wasn't just strong. He would have to have a bad day. I think by June with some things that are happening, bench coming up, other stuff and everything rounds out, I'm strong enough to actually go head to head 
on a good day. Um, and so that, that's really the goal. It's just like, just cause I'm hurt. Like I'm not backing down from that whole, like, Oh yeah, I'm not trying to break the world record. I'm just trying to see what that, like I'm, I'm, that's the goal. That's the objective. If I miss, I miss, but I, I stand on kind of what I say and my goals on that. Like we have to break the world record in order to do so make a couple of dollars so, in the process. But the goal is, is to it, go to IPF worlds and get to the world games. So would you, would you say that you're treating chef rather than a, because I wanted to follow up with another question, but are you thinking more along the lines of Sheffield is my ticket to get to Worlds. Wolves rather than yes. like I want to win Sheffield and put myself in the best position to win Sheffield? I, I think I, I think you max the person out as much as humanly possible at Sheffield, and I, I have to do that regardless anyway. Um, and so the chips are going to fall where they fall, right? Um, because of the way that Sheffield is set up, it's it's far too difficult to try to guess, okay, well, what happens if Jesus does this versus um, Tim Matagati does that versus, you know, whoever does this and then try to do the it, – it, there's so many little small nuances to it that I believe if you just max the person out and you see what they actually have, wherever you fall, you fall. And then, you know, if it's a close battle and you get to the end, like there's some gamesmanship that goes on. Um, and – don't get me wrong. I do also believe that just by virtue of the way that last Sheffield happened and everything else, as well as worlds, that me breaking the world record, whether it's by an inch or by a mile, again, to your point, still puts me in a position where I'm, I'm, I might fall in that one, two, three, depending on where, where, like I was one pull away from, from fourth to second or third, you know, it, based on the way that Sheffield is graded. Um, and so I think that all of that will will work itself out. Um, I'm in a position mentally and like spiritually and all that where Sheffield, I'm not so consumed with winning a bag at Sheffield that like I'm clouding my bigger vision. Like I would do Sheffield for free if it means that I do what I need to do and I get to the World Games because that's my end goal, right? And, and the only way to get to the World Games is to get to Worlds this year and do what you have to do, right? And so that's the bigger vision. And so this is a short-term piece that's great. Like, who wouldn't want to make money? To bet? But, like, that is the vision. And so I won't sacrifice that for, you well, know, for, for, the, for the bigger vision. And so I, – but I think that, like you said, it's, like, it's kind of like a three-way thing. If I break the world record, it puts me in a position that I, I'm probably going to be somewhere up there. But the, 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 the main thing, keeping the main thing is the main thing is I have to get back to Worlds. I have to get back to Worlds. I have to face Jerns, Russ, and uh, all, all the – I have to do it again. I have to do it a third time, and it would be cool to be able to have a three-peat on that front. And so that's, that's the vision, and that's where my mind is just laser-focused on to. I mean, you mentioned World Games there, right? I mean, one of the stipulations to qualify for it is I think you have to come top three in a weight class – but unfortunately, the caveat for Americans that people that don't know, you can't get two people from the same nation in that way, class. So it means mm. you have to beat Russ. One of you will have to win. The winner have to qualify. It, I'm, I'm talking about, of course, of yeah. course, some of us will be there, Anna will be there. I'm talking about um, in terms of like you two as a nation, because it looks like if you get to world, Russ get to world, one of you will get to world games. Mm -hmm. right. So whether it's mm -hmm. one, two, or two, three, whatever, one of you, because they can't. I think yeah. they can't get two lifters from the same weight class from the same nation because they just want to give other people an opportunity as well. So that's something probably people don't know much. I think people should research, should research about this and read the stipulation really well because people just thinking I'm going to go to world, come top three, and get to world games. No, there is other caveat within that yeah. as well. So, but again, what you said there. A world is a perfect platform for you to show your game. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. There's no other platform better than the world championship for you to go there, go up against anybody and beat them think, like, I've beaten them a world. Even if mm -hmm. it's a me domestically, but I've done it a world. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. That has Absolutely. more credibility than anything else. Do you know what I mean? Absolutely. So again, I think I said this to you in South Africa when you won. Of course, you were emotional in terms of about your performance, but I said to you, Regardless of what happened, my friend, in 10, 15, 20 years' time, people just want to ask who was the world champion in 2022. They're not going to ask what did he total. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. Just, just to confirm there, though, just to confirm, the, the, word, the word, that correct wording is no more than two can be selected from a country per each weight class. So, in a oh, sense, then, if there was, 
So if there was, for example, Ross, Delaney, and let's say Keiko as the 93, whoever has the, the, the two that have the highest GL point will go. Oh, right. right. Yes. Yeah, okay. yeah. Thank you. Thank you for that. So that, that's something people should probably read because a lot of people are not reading that things properly. But yeah, as you said, that I, I agree. I, I understand what you mean in terms of your mindset, getting yourself to world and competing there, especially the way you guys, um, uh, the process is done in America is different across the world. So let me ask, they call Pino because you said he has dropped from the E3 the in America. He was age 25. What has he gone to now? I, I, I don't know the exact math of it, but because the 840 total from 2020, yeah, the last one that Russ won. 2021. So the one before that, I think, drops off. Oh, right. so, it, so it leaves wow. it leaves the 815 the 802.5 that i had and then whatever the one before that was so the, it's probably going to be maybe like 815 820 ish like it's going to drop some i just don't know how much i didn't do the math on it because it's like i'm like it's irrelevant like okay who, like any like whoever's going to come they're going to hit that it's just a matter of you know, can I hit enough to get the, the alternate spot on that front? Um, so I was like small, small details like that. I didn't kind of like chip out, but I do know it, it definitely did go down if they do it the same way that they did last year yeah. um, when it came to us, because that was the one caveat. Like it wasn't just, oh, Delaney had to out total whoever is at PA Nationals. It was they had to miss a total. And then if I followed up and beat the total that they missed, then I got there. But if they had hit the total, even if I told 900, I wasn't. Wow. So, in terms of of uh, Sheffield, have you ever considered uh, dropping weight class? Because the seventy four, the seventy four uh, world record ran out. I mean, no offense to the guys, it's pretty weak. Seven ninety. Um, have you, have you, you seen? Went, you weren't here in seven ninety not too long ago. You were struggling. Bro, to bro, 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 bro. Seven ninety is bad days nowadays. Lena <laughs> <laughs> said it. We've moved on. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Um, no, 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 I'm not, I, I would, I, I would, I would be a, I would be a, an unpleasant human being if I had to cut down to 74. I have no desire to do that. Um, the amount of dieting that would have to go, I, I, I sit pretty close to the weight class, at least for us lifters, um, uh, anyway, but to get all the way down to 74 kilos, which what, like 164 pounds or something like that, like. I, like I think I was, I think I, I think I was in like eighth grade when I was 164 pounds. Like, <laughs> it, 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 it'd be sick. But yeah, nah, I'm not, 62. Yeah, no, nah, I'm not. I'm not doing that. I'm but not Tim doing Mon that. Tim did it. Uh, uh, in yeah, but my man looks sick, bro. My <laughs> man looks sick, bro. Well, I, but I it worked out Tim in his favor. Like it worked out in his favor. He got the chef. Yeah. He did what he had to do. I'm still, I'm still mad at him. I want, I wanted to see him again at, at at uh at worlds because i know we both had a bad meet at worlds last time around that we saw each other but but well, it'll hey, be quite it'll be interesting to see whether he chooses to do sheffield as a 74 or as an 83 because then he can i think he's maintained what 770 780 totals of 74 now so if he spent the next three to four months just bulking back into the weight class how much that'd of a strength be, gain would he that'd gain? be a sick that'd be a sick storyline imagine you get to sheffield he's like huh, psych motherfucker <laughs> I'm your ass, boy. Heard that ad up to hurt, man. <laughs> uh, I think well, yeah. um, again. Um, I think what what Delaney said there, we can only judge what we're seeing on social media. We don't know the externals. But what I'm seeing from him and the conversation I've been having from him, the numbers is putting up now. If he stays at the 74s, he's gonna blow that world record from very far. Do you know what I mean? That's 790. He's gonna blow it, and then that will give him an opportunity potentially. You know how people are talking about who, who's going to win with, uh, Sheffield? Tim can get that potential to be the top three at Sheffield. Both of the seventy fours could for sure, yeah. for yeah. sure. Yeah. Um. I mean, are... everybody. I mean, I think everybody that's there. I mean, like that's the reason why everybody's there. I think everybody that's oh, yeah. there, if they have the day they're supposed to have, is is is, is even Jesus. Even though he obliterated the world record last year, like he could obliterate it again. Like, like you, like, you got the Captain America serum. Like, he's the freaking Hulk. Like, you know. Bro, look, look, um, look, at the, look at the numbers doing now, bro. I'm not going to be surprised if he does 1180 or 11. Yeah, man. I, 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 had to mute, I had to mute him on Instagram. He started making me feel bad, you know? Like, <laughs> no, I'm joking. I'm joking. But, um, but yeah. So, I mean, yeah, no. To, but to your question, I'm, I'm not, I would never go down to 74. Uh, like, like, yeah. Like, you, 
somebody would have to pay me to go down to 74. Like, like I just want to do a social experiment. Delaney, you get X five dollars just for trying this because I'm not putting myself through that stress. Um, going up a weight class is way more likely than going down a weight class. But I think that where I sit just naturally, I'm, I'm not one of those people that's like, I'm not like maxing out the 84 frame. Like it's like, I think the world's this year, I sat in the sauna for a total of two minutes to lose the last like ounce that I needed to like last minute for like the thing. And that was the first time I used the sauna ever to, to make weight. And literally like I walked in, I looked at my phone and I was like, Oh, it overheated. I walked out and I stepped on the scale and I was already underweight. So like, I, it doesn't, it's not hard for me to mm -hmm. make weight at this weight class that I don't feel the need that I need to go up because I'm just like, Oh, I'm doing hero cuts. Like, I'm, you know, so yes. I, I, I think I'm, I'm, I think I'm an 83 for a little while, you know? But in terms of like, um, because again, you mentioned and the rest of, because now one of the good thing about world championship, because, it, because even Russ, when he came to 2019 in Canada, when he competed, he went back to America and then his mindset changed about world. It changed about powerlifting itself because he's seen the rest of the world. It's not just mm -hmm. Americans where we are strong, but there's people out there that can come out of nowhere and whip your ass thinking, fucking hell, man, where this guy coming from? Because that's yeah. what we call the world championship. So you've done yeah. it twice. Your eyes have opened. Is it because, again, you say you don't consume powerlifting much, but when you get close to that competition, I'm not talking about Sheffield, but Sheffield, you don't have no, your only competition in your Sheffield is yourself. Do as much as you mm -hmm. can. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So in yeah. terms of like that, world platform competition do you look elsewhere as well in terms of what other people been up to of course not to influence what you're doing but it's just that being in a no no the, i i see i see what you post because it happens to come up on my feed because we chop it up on the dm so the algorithm gives it to me if kotl reposts it then yeah um every once in a while i'll see I'll see I'm um, uh, in a deadlift something. I don't even look at the number. I just know it's a lot. Like, you know, um, I just know it's a lot. Like, so I don't even, I don't even bother myself by stressing myself out. Um, but yet I, I, I truly don't like, and this isn't me trying to be like funny or have like a soundbite or something. Like I truly, like if I didn't meet you and shake your hand, I have no clue who you are. I have no understanding of what you can do. And to me, it doesn't matter because me looking at your lifts aren't going to change mine, you yeah. know? Like I didn't know, like I, I, I objectively did not know who Nick Manders was until like you saw when I met him, I was like, oh, this is like, he, I didn't know. I, I knew there was some kid that was named Nick Manders that had like a cool punchline on KOTL that people were talking about. Like, I don't need a deadlift. I don't need a tactical advantage. I pull 800, but I, I didn't, I didn't, I was like, oh, cool. That's kind of, that's kind of a dope bar. And then that was it. Like I did. And then I met, him. I was like, oh, okay, now I put a face to the name. Now I know. But I had no idea what his training was like. I had no idea what he benches, what he squats. I know he deadlifts a lot. Like I, like um, there was another Canadian guy that I didn't really know who he was, but he benches a lot. Like I just don't consume it. One because I'm so busy with just like outside work stuff and like just life in general on that end. But two because objectively, me watching you squat, let's say 705 in the gym, did not train change a single thing about my training nor my strength. And so for me to sit here and be like, oh, I'm going to go and stalk Jern's page to go figure out what he's doing here. I'm going to go stalk Enna's page and go like send a carrier pigeon somewhere to Hungary and be like, oh, yo, like what's he doing with his deadlift? Like it's not going to do anything for me. So I was just like, you know, like, I, I try to use my time in ways that are that are going to give me some type of net net benefit. And the way that I see it is. And it's and it 100 percent just going to change now that Russ is coming back. But the way at least I saw it going into the multi worlds is like if I'm 100 percent and I do what I believe I'm capable of, man to man, I think I'm winning, regardless mm -hmm. of what's what's happening. Right um, now, the storyline changes because man to man, like Russ is, he's the fucking man. And if he comes back and everything goes to his plan and blah blah blah, it's going to be a slightly different story. But it still doesn't like. Even my first nationals when I got to compete with him at it was a 2021 Raw Nationals or whatever it was right before the split. Like I wasn't watching his training. I was like, all right, cool, he's strong. I'm gonna be there on the day, and you have to do what you have to do to win on the day. And if you slip up, I'm gonna be there, and I'm gonna do whatever I can to try to get there. But you know, I so I'm not I'm not the kind of person that like I, I couldn't care less about people's training. <laughs> 
to me personally the reason why i don't really watch because i watch people's stories in britain like more stories uh, fun enough delaney i'm more into people other weight class than the 83s i don't care about nobody you know I mean? <laughs> if, you're, if you're not my homie bro like, if we're not homies right like, <laughs> <laughs> me is more, more is more about I, I would love to watch see more stories when he squat like 700 pounds and after they start crying by his knees i laugh at things like that i'm thinking wow this man is like 110 kilos or 105 kilos squatting 700 pounds is, squat, is crying by his knees and i'm like 83 and squatting like what um 680 or something like that and then the next day i go running do you know what I mean? I laugh at things like that just because basically I just have to laugh at bigger guys. But I don't watch yeah. it because I want to consume other people, what they're doing. Because at the end of the day, if Emma load 400 kilos or 410 to beat you, if you pull it, there's nothing I can do. There's nothing you can do. You, you got you to gotta chalk that up to the game, bro. Like, you know, you know. You know, you pull so, it more yeah. than the weight class. You pull, you pull it more than the weight class above you. It's like, you just got, like, how, you can't defend that. You, know, you got to chalk it up to the game. Uh, I love, yeah. I love, I love seeing him lift so much, but I hate that prick man when he does it because he just keeps the. Yeah, would you be? I, yeah, you better than me. I hate it every time I see it. I'm like, I hate deadlift specialists. I hate all of you. It, it should be illegal. Like, like there, there should be a rule. Yo, talk about the IPF rule. This is a rule change. Forget elbow death. We need a rule that your deadlift cannot be a certain percentile higher than your squat. Because then it's just not it don't it doesn't make sense like that should be banned. It's like you should be capped on how much your deadlift can be over your squat. I'm, I, I I've had enough. I had enough of my man coming from coming from twenty fifth place, going into deadlifts and then pull his first dead and now he had fucking second. I've had enough. I've had enough to hear. I'm at the end of my rope. It just stresses me out. They come up to you giggling and laughing. Like, oh, like, yeah, no, bro. this shit's not funny, bro. He yeah. trying to act like he don't know what's going on. Meanwhile, he's a damn like brain surgeon or something. Nah, bro. Like, I know his game. I don't play with him. Nah, nah. Oh, we, got beef. I mean, we got beef. We got beef. The upsetting part for me is when they put the opener. You just thinking like, fucking hell. I'm thinking about hitting that number next year as a top set. And he's opening with that. What the fuck? Do you know what I mean? <laughs> you know? So, yeah. Uh, anyway, my next question, Delaney, is this is basically, it's a bit different. This is basically us as elites. You know what I mean? We call us, I mean, I don't call myself elite. I don't call myself world You class. call yourself elite every single day. Okay. Every chance you get, you call yourself okay. elite. I only, I only call myself elite. I only, call, okay, Delaney, listen to this. I only call myself elite to make a point to somebody. Because people sometimes they mistaken that word elite. They're just thinking, oh, because someone taught or something, or you squatted a, a six hundred pound squat in the gym, you're calling yourself elite. Fuck off. You're not elite, bro. Do you know what I mean? Go to world, get whipped twice by Delaney, get whipped once by uh, by, by by Russ, and then call yourself elite. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? So anyway, I've done that. And so what my question is like. There's a lot of things happening here nowadays on social media, trolling and all of that stuff, especially Taylor Howard is the one that's facing a lot of this. So what what do you think, you know, in terms of the story, the narrative, everything around, especially now that like Perkins has come out of nowhere and did what he did. Do you know what I mean? And Taylor, I don't think he came out of nowhere. I don't think he came out of nowhere, but yeah. But what I mean come out what I mean come out of nowhere in terms of like what Perkins did on the 74, I don't think the rest of the world, the powerful American and people that follow power of lifting like us, were expecting it. I was not expecting any less than that. I was expecting 840, 850 from Perkins, mm. right? But people, some people were not expecting that. They just okay. saw Perkins to the 851. They were like, what the fuck? And now yeah. the trolling start coming in on Taylor. So what's your perception? What's your view about all of that around that all that story? So again, and, and y'all can run, run this podcast back. Remember what I said about like it's the moment in which things happen that mm. are just as important as the total. Yeah. And so, and again, this is bias aside because me and Taylor were boys, whatever the case may be. Me and Perkins, like we, we've had conversation. He's cool. I'm a fan of his, whatever the case may be. But so like the whole trolling of it all, it doesn't make sense to me. One, because you're, you're judging somebody at their best. Mm -hmm. versus somebody that is notably and documentedly like hurt like like hurt like taylor is legitimately on like half of a leg not even one leg like half of a leg you know 
Um, like his second attempts at nationals when he had his big meet would have won worlds this year if he just did his second attempts and went home. Like maybe I'm wrong, I didn't do the math on it, but you get what I'm saying, you get the concept of it. And so, and I get it, right? Like it's like battles and trolling and like disrespect and the the like talking shit for clicks and views, it, it gains more attention, it gains more trackers, it gets you more shares and all the other stuff. So from a social media standpoint, I get I, I get some of it. Um but I mean let's be let's be real. Like the same way that I said that even if I had broken Russ's record at Sheffield, I wouldn't say that I'm better than Russ because he literally did it two years before I did it. Like so I had it, it took me extra time to do it. And I didn't do it on the same day as in like other like whatever. I'll just say, hey, I have the better total. But am I the best 83 ever? Mm, that's that's very arguable because the moments in when he did it, he went head to head with Brett Gibbs, one of the power of the, of the 83s. He went head to head with the, he did head to head. He did this before it was even thought to be possible. And so when I look at Taylor and some of the backlash that he gets for it, mind you, also just because I've lifted with him. So I think that people take like the same way that people take your confidence, Jerns, for like arrogance or they don't like it sometimes. Like, I think they take like people speaking matter of factly as like an insult. Like Taylor's like, I'm the best powerlifter in the world when he was literally the best powerlifter in the world. I'm just like dots, IPF points, tested, untested. He literally did something that nobody like he's the best. Allow him to say it. Like it's not wrong for him to say it, right? And so they take that as some type of like he's cocky or he's this or he's that or blah, blah, blah. But it's funny because Perkins will say it now. And it's not that same backlash, right? And so I think it just depends on the person where we accept what they're able to say. And this is, again, I, I want to also say, like, this is not me picking on either one of them. This is just me looking objectively and saying, why is this being graded differently than this? And the backlash that Taylor gets for saying when he was the best power lifter in the world versus Perk saying that when he's objectively the best power lifter in the world, it's two different forms of judgment now. And it's very interesting. Um, and yeah, you can go back and you say, I forget what's what's his name. Um, um, the guy from overseas is now in the USAPL, Devlift, Devlift Lord. Um, Rondell. Rondell, like Rondell, strong ass dude, whatever. I know he came up and they had their little like quarrel or beef and they said whatever, blah, blah, blah. There's a third. Like, and so like there's, there's all these different things that happen. So maybe people that were on Rondell's team were like, oh, they, so there's also going to just be battles. Like I'm a Ravens fan, so I'm going to hate Steelers fans just because they hate Steelers fans, not, not because they're anything else, because they're Steelers and that's my rival, right? Um, but when I look at what Taylor did, and I think that this is something that if you objectively look at it, when Taylor totaled that like 837 and a half or whatever the hell he did, that was by far the biggest spread between like the world record and anything that a 74, 73, 75, whatever hell freaking weight class it was, the world had ever seen. And he had did it and he had done it with a, outside of overseas, right? Like, the best people in the world all in one place. Like it wasn't with the USAPL split. So Russ decided not to compete at, IP, uh, at nationals. So, and Taylor almost beat Russ's total. When, when Russ made that total, I was there. Sean Noriega was there. Angela was there. Pancake Got was there. Perk was there. And Perk was competing with him. So they had a head-to-head -head matchup, matchup when, when Taylor did that. And so when I look at that and I say, how can you disrespect what happened there? knowing that the person that you're now saying is the best was there at the time when they did that. And they were supposed to, you know, go head to head. He, they were supposed to be a, a pretty good battle. Perk just didn't have the day that he was supposed to have, like stuff happens. Right. And then, and, and, and now there's all this trolling and stuff. And I'm just like, I, I think that Taylor paved the way for Perk, right? Before Taylor did what he did, we wouldn't even have thought that what Perk did was even conceivable. Right. But going into it, people that actually watch it in any way, shape, or form, I'm looking at Perk's training. I'm like, yo, this boy's on fire. He's going to do 840, 850, 860, whatever the case may be. And if you had fast, if you had rewinded and put that same person in, in the Taylor era when that happened, you would have been like, there's no way in fucking hell that's even conceivable that a 74 is going to out total the, 80, the 83. 
right? Oh, by the way, when he did it, the best 83 in the world, aka Russell Orhe, was also in the building as well. And he almost out told him if he had just had his he didn't jump his press command on his on his third bench. Right. And so when you look at it objectively, the moment in when in which things happens are just as important as the total. And again, I'm not taking a damn thing away from Perk. I'm like I was excited to see. I don't watch powerlifting. I made sure that I stayed up to date with what was going on with Perk because I thought it was exciting to watch. Like, I, like he's exciting to watch, right? But I'm strictly talking about, like, just the trolling and, like, the, like, all, the, like, the kind of, like, disrespect type of thing when it comes to these two people. Um, so it's very interesting to watch people say the same exact thing and get graded on two different scales. Taylor says, I'm the best. You hate him. He's, he's an arrogant fuck, whatever the case may be. He's not whatever, blah, blah, blah. Won multiple world championships. Won, like, nine national championships. Has the, like, you can't poke a hole in his actual pedigree, right? Perk, on the other hand, hasn't won as many things as Taylor has won at this present point in time. No three world championships, no nine national championships. Has done a lot and has a lot more to go because he's young. He says he's the best, and we love him for it. So it, it, I, it, it's hard for me objectively to look at it and be like, that's a fair grading scale, right? And then also to be, just be like, hey, like, yo, like, Healthy to healthy. I would love to see both of them healthy. I don't know if Taylor's going to be healthy in time to beat Perk, to be honest with you. I have no clue. We haven't spoken in a little while, so I don't really know how his his um, his um rehab's going. I hope he is because I think those two titans going head-to-head -head with each other is something that the world wants to see. Like a like a healthy Jesus versus a healthy Ray Williams. Like that, that's the equivalent of it, of Perk and, and, and Taylor. Um, But yeah, like that that's my feeling on it. It's very weird, and that's why I say powerlifters and powerlifting is extremely weird. Because in other sports, it would not be like that. It wouldn't be the same way, right? And we have this very, like, just, it, again, it's just the grading scale and the fact that we can just use a hard number and just be like, hey, this total is better than that total. But it's just like, if you were to just do that for basketball and look at Michael Jordan versus LeBron, then you just look at the stats and say, that's the person that's better. But objectively, you know that that's not actually the case because Michael Jordan went up against this guy versus that guy. You have championships, you have this, you have that. And so the storyline that comes around it, the anxiety of knowing that you have a competition with you, like Taylor did it when Perk was in the building. And Perk was supposed to do essentially that two years ago. Like we thought Perk was the man before he be actually became the man. It just took a little bit of time for him to develop. But he, Taylor had to worry about Perk doing that while he was there. Perk it was like almost like, not a free ride. It was like he knew that there was nobody that was touching Perk on that day. So it's similar to me going to Sheffield and knowing that there's no 83. I don't have to worry about, oh, well, if I miss this lift, Jaron might do this and then I lose. Fuck it. Let's load it. We're here to just go get records, you know? Like you play the game differently. Mm. Um, but again, like it, it's not – and I know that somebody's going to take this clip and I hate it. I know somebody's going to take this and say, oh, I'm talking shit. I don't whatever and blah, blah, blah. Like – I genu like when I say I genuinely love both of them as athletes, and I think what they did is fucking exciting. And Perk is objectively the best powerlifter in the world, maybe second to Jesus, right? Depending on how you want to grade it, because what Jesus did is absolutely crazy. So let's like you know let's you know you know like, let's like take it for what it is. Um, but it's it like the, the grading scale in which both of them have been graded on when you look at it all, it doesn't make objective sense. It's all emotional, but it doesn't make objective sense. If you took the, I don't like the way they set it out of it and just looked at what they've accomplished, you can't, you can't sit there and rip on Taylor Atwood. When, when, like, he's essentially Tom Brady. But he's thing, essentially like, Tom Brady. With me, right, the perception about this one, like great, everything you said, like I, I kind of, on your side and then you know again we love both of them because they're incredible powerlifters but you can't really compare them two because every single person have their time so there's a time where you're on the top and there's time where you won't be on the top anymore do you know what i mean it's, it's like let's just say in the next five years time or six years time these young kids come in and start literally like totaling our total by second attempt would they say they are better powerlifter than us no we told it we, we, we told him more than um than John Hack did when he was in 83. Are we better powerlifters than John Hack? No. Come on now. <laughs> come, on. <laughs> like, come on now. Like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> You're dumb if you think that. Like, you know what I'm saying? No. Like, like, but no. technically, my best total is better than Brett Gibbs. Best total is, am I better than Brett Gibbs? Hell no. If that boy didn't bust up his tricep, he would have been whooping my ass. 
<laughs> like you know, like so you have to look at the time, and so that's why I'm like, it's it's not even it's not even a fair comparison the way people are doing the comparisons because hmm. you're talking about a 35 year old man that's on the back half of his career versus a 24 year old 25 year old that's that that he, he he's he's only going to continue to go up uh, assuming he doesn't get hurt knock on wood everything's good right and so we're, we're not even comparing them in fragments of time that actually makes sense to the way that powerlifting is 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 graded and competed mm -hmm. on and so that, that's why it's so difficult for me um and, and, and it annoys me when i when i see it and i and, and like and it's not just because taylor's my boy like i got annoyed when there was like some stuff going on and people were like bashing russ for certain things i'm like bro the the, the dude the dude every time he shows up he wins whether he's mm -hmm. hurt or not just pay respect and let him know like let him say he's the best he's the best damn like just beat him then if you're mad about it right and <laughs> he's in my weight class so i have no reason to defend him so it's not like a friend thing. It's just like I look at things so objectively that I'm like, how do you guys just blur the line between reality and your emotion? Um, and so that's my feeling on that. that whole thing. To me, even if in Malta we end up beating Ross, that doesn't make us better than Ross. <laughs> no, it doesn't. You know what I mean? No, every dog has his day. I ain't going to lie to you. Yeah? Juice is going to get a banner that said, I beat Ross, and he's probably just gonna every single podcast. Every that's single, that that sounds like Jerns. Yeah, oh, every single like, meeting, oh, oh, you'll probably oh, get oh, a shirt too, and it just start the meeting like this. Like, yeah, yeah that's about. No, no, you got it too late. When I beat Ross in, in Malta, I retire. I'm not going to World Games. <laughs> What's the point? No, I retire. That's it. <laughs> that's, fair. that's fair. I can't be mad at it. That's fair. <laughs> you know, that's being Russ. It means being Delaney at the same time and Russ, two times world champion, both of them, and I beat them. <laughs> Man. He's like, he's like tech, so then technically by the math, that means that I have five, five world championships. Yeah, that's a okay. two, and I took his two, and I got my one. So I'm the best pilot. Yeah, oh man. That's I said more, it, you I'm, said I'm, I'm blocking you one. Blo if that happens, I'm blocking you. I don't even want to get <laughs> anyway, I'm, I'm Oh man, this, this was a blast, mate. Thank you very much on this or coming on, bro. My my last question to you is just like how you um no, but we spoke about the numbers in Sheffield. We spoke about the Ross story coming back. We covered a lot. So to me, it's just about the experience of Sheffield. What are you expecting next year? Dude, um, and you were there, so you know I'm not just like gassing it up just for the gas of it. I mean, it was, Sheffield was single-handedly the greatest powerlifting experience that I've ever had, right? Um, World cha winning a world championship, I, would, I wouldn't trade it for the world. Like that, that honor is a totally different thing. But if we just we take the prizes out of both of them and we just talk about the actual experience of competing in it, like I wish that every powerlifter had the opportunity to experience what I experienced last year or this year, right? Um, and it pushes you that much more at Worlds to try to get back. Because I'm telling you, man, like that, that arena was electrifying. SBD put on a great show and it's only going to get better. Like that was the worst Sheffield that will ever happen because it's only going to get better. And it was the best powerlifting need to ever be put on, period. I'm not arguing with anybody about it. If you say otherwise, you're just illiterate, dumb, and you just don't have common sense. Right. And so, um, like what I expect from Sheffield, I expect it to be rocking. Um, I expect it to be even more packed than it was the, the, the lights, the cameras, the people cheering, like the celebrations afterwards, all like all the love. Like it, I, I expect Sheffield is what powerlifting could and should be on like a grand scale, like world should be like Sheffield. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, and in a way, and I'm not going to say that it, 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 like in a way worlds becomes an easier stage to compete on after you competed at Sheffield. Yeah. Right. Right. From like from like an anxiety standpoint, from a handling the crowd standpoint, from a, like the lights are really on you standpoint, like Worlds does not compare to Sheffield from a standpoint of like the moment and that feeling of that type of pressure. It's a different kind of pressure. Right. You got people you got to beat head on. Da, da, da. Um, but, man, I just expect it to be electrifying. I mean, the cast of people that we have is 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 is, is great. The storylines that come up to it is great. Um, the storylines behind the storylines, right? We have this battle of the 74s. We have the 93 battle again. But even me, even though I stand alone there, right? There's that battle of can Delaney get healthy enough in time to do enough 
to get back to worlds where the almighty Russell Orhi is coming back. And so these storylines that are unfolding even in between and, and, and the ebbs and flows of it all. And like, if you, nobody has regretted going to Sheffield. Mm. Anybody that went did not regret watching Sheffield. And I don't watch powerlifting. I've never seen a full powerlifting meet from start to finish. Even if I wasn't competing there, that would be the only powerlifting meet that I would watch start to finish. Right. Um, and so it's, it's an honor to be a part of it. I'm super excited to be there. I mean, Pete from SBD and the rest of the team, like they put in so much work. I had the honor of being able to like come down there to the facility and like see the work that goes into everything. And it's just like, it honestly motivated me even more to get ready because this prep has been like, it's, it's been the worst prep of my career just because it's not about getting stronger. It's about like, can I get healthy in time enough to just like, Get, get back to baseline and then build on top of it. It's like this, this, this fighting game of like, you see everybody, they're hitting PRs and I'm like, all right, damn, I finally squatted 600. Kind of hurt, but okay, it's not that bad, right? Um, and like after I got to see all of that, like a few weeks ago when I was down there for like a different thing, um, it really, it, 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 again, I derive inspiration and motivation from like just so many different places. It pushes you to want to do and be more. Um, and it's, it's, it's fueled the next, you know, 10, 12 weeks of my prep as well. It, it's the greatest experience you'll ever have. Um, if you're listening to this and you're on the fence about getting a ticket, man, get, get the damn ticket. You won't be disappointed. Um, like, and, and any power lifter that is trying to come up and they have aspirations of getting to the top or doing whatever, like, look at, look at this meet, look at the guys and girls that compete there, talk to everybody there. And like that, that should be your North star that guides every decision that you make. Um, when it comes to a power to a, to powerlifting, right? It's so like Sheffield should be your north star that you gauge your powerlifting journey off of. And how can I get there? Because I, I truly, I truly, truly mean this with all my heart. Like I wish that every powerlifter had the experience to compete in that arena the same way that I had, I, I did this past year. So uh, I'm I'm excited for it. I love it. Um, and I'm ready to get back 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 to it again, man. Thank you for indirectly telling me get a fuck get yourself to Sheffield, you prick. Anyway, Mo, any last you question? You got no excuse. You just around your corner. You <laughs> exactly. got no damn excuse. Man, I'm happy you didn't get to Sheffield. It's a damn local meet for you. You just roll out of bed. It wouldn't even be fair. I'd get smacked. <laughs> Yo, you you make it next year and I make it next year. I'm telling I'm telling Pete, y'all can't do it. Yeah, yeah. Like you will have to we're gonna put you on a plane and send you to India or something, and you have to fly back or something. We gotta make this shit fair. I'm not playing with you. Oh, it's in your backyard. You ain't got a ticket yet. Oh, you don't get no damn ticket. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Mo, any it. last question from your side? My last question was very simple, Delaney. Um, you a few you've done. You did the first Sheffield. It was an experience. It was an honor. Um, a few people will be coming back. You have a few returning cast on the last one. Carlina, for example. You know his shoes, Keiko, Gavin. But we've got a few like new names, right? So, is there any message you want for the previous returners from the from the first Sheffield to the new people who are going to be part of this competition. At the end of the day, it's every man for himself. It's a money meet. Your goals are slightly different due to the situation you're in, but you're going up against every single one in every single weight class. So what's your message to all your competitors? You're a competitor. You're going there to compete. What's your message you want to tell the other members of Sheffield going there? Yeah, man. I mean, to, every, to everybody going, man, give, give your heart, man. Give you all, give your heart, because I'm going to give you mine, right? I'm going to leave it all in the field. You're going to see my emotion. You're going to see the ups. You're going to see the downs. I'm giving you everything that I possibly can throughout this prep. Like, I'm giving you everything that I got, and I expect the same from all of you guys, man. Um, and and for all the new cast, it's like consume the moment. Don't let it don't let it scare you. Don't let it frighten you. Don't run from it. Consume it. Lean into it. Lean into the pressure. Lean into the, to the, to the crowd. Lean into the lights. Lean into all of it, because you can use it as fuel and yeah, man. I like give give your heart, give your heart out there, man. Yeah, because I'm I'm gonna give you mine. Yeah, that, that's that's it. Oh, thank you. Um, last one. Just I would need to add one. I had to. I had to. I'm sorry. Would you get new shoes for Sheffield? Gold, pink. Uh, so that's the uh that that's the goal. I'm working on it right now. To actually remind, I gotta text the guy to see if I can get it done. Um. So yeah, I'm gonna get a. I got, you know, I got, I got to come out there and style. I got to do a little something, something. So <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll see what new I can, what, what new, new I can come out for you guys. But you know me, it wouldn't, it wouldn't be me if I didn't do something to piss the IPF ref, refs off, you know? <laughs> as soon as I saw your story saying is anyone has got some link with Nike, hit me up. I was like, mm, 
We're expecting some new pink or gold shoes here. <laughs> listen, uh, listen, Lo- love it or hate it, you gonna make you gonna know when I step on the platform. <laughs> uh, listen, mate, it's been a pleasure to have you on, and then to be honest, I wish you luck, and hopefully, I'll pray to God for you to get healthy because at the end of the day. We want everybody to be 100% to give us a show because I'm not going to go and sit there in the audience and watch half Delaney squatting like 600 pounds. You will piss me off, bro. I will fight you for 600 pounds. For real. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm going to give yeah. you something, man. I'm going to give yeah. you something. You know, I, I'll, I, I, will, I will say this. I will say this. If, we'll, we'll see what happens with squatting Des with my legs, but de- definitely expect a nice PR on bench. I'll give you that. Oh, bench, we're looking yeah. I mean, don't de- worry, de- 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 Definitely they expect would- a nice one for that. The world record is 218, so, do you know what I mean? You're not far off. You get it. Yeah. Yeah, you know. <laughs> cool. Um, mate, um, for anyone who's listening to us, guys, if um, you have any question for Delaney, I know he said he doesn't consume powerlifting, send those questions to him. If he doesn't reply, reach out to me, and I'll get him to reply, right? So we we are on Spotify and um, YouTube. So, again, if anyone is looking to come to Sabadell Podcast, just drop me a message. Guys, you're more than welcome. A lot of people are telling me I don't invite people. Look, some of these big names I get on the podcast is not because I go and beg them. No, I just go, guys, can you come and chat? They say yes. So if you want to chat to me, just drop me a DM. So on that note, guys, we'll speak to you soon. Peace out.